Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to build a 3-in-1 CNC machine. And this machine is going to be a 3D printer, CNC router and a laser cutter. A lot of folks asking me about the 6-axis CNC machine. So this is different from that. And to build that machine, I need something which can cut for me accurate. Because there are a lot of parts in that machine for which I need something like this so i decided to build this one before that and second thing is that i have a part left over from my first cnc machine so i decided why not to build this one and utilize that material and uh, it didn't cost me too much because most of the material i have already in my shop so here it is so two weeks ago I started the work onto the design of the machine and uh, initially I made two design and prefer this one over that although the main motive of this machine is to do the 3d print but since I have to make that six axis machine so I decided to build it quite beefy and sturdy that's why I use three linear rod on one side and uh, this is, they are definitely not necessary if i use supported rails then i will definitely use one on each side so this is the design of this machine and the z-axis is made out of 4x4 box pipe and uh, on each side there are two plates each having 8x8 dimension and are 3 8 inch thick for the bottom base i decided to use 2x2 square pipe the total workable area of the base is around 19 inches by 14 inches and the height goes up to 30 inches so in the design there are some complications so in the gantry there is no space to install the ball screw on the front side so i decided to install it onto the back with some l brackets around that since the workpiece is going to be placed onto the y-axis so I decided to use supported linear rails and this will definitely help to hold the workpiece without any sag. So that's all about the design and uh, let's build it. So for the cable management I drill down the holes and make a slot so that wire can be fitted through them for a better and efficient cable management. And during the weld I kept the slot side inward.
so if you stick so far with the video i would really appreciate if you like the video and if you are new to the channel and like these kind of project then make sure to subscribe the channel also that would really help to grow this channel So these plates I cut down for the bottom portion of the z-axis and uh, it would be not possible for that angle grinder to cut it completely so I go with the jigsaw and here are the piece and uh, there is a lot of file work need to do but once the file work has been completed they are easily fitted inside those pipes. To mark the whole location onto those plates, I print out these templates and uh, they are and both of them have different hole locations. But first of all, I need to cut down this template to the required dimension which is 8 inches by 8 inches and then I'm going to stick it onto the plate. First of all, I'm going to centralize that template so that the hole location are equidistant from all the sides so during the designing process i was thinking about welding the plates onto the top of that 4x4 square pipe but then i realized that what if i am not able to weld it as perfect as i as it needed so i cancelled that thing and decided to use the bolts for the connection onto the top plate I marked the hole location for the 8 holes out of them 4 are used for the leveling purpose and 4 of them are used for the connection purpose. The holes drilled for the connection purpose are drilled out slightly larger so that they will provide a room for the fine adjustment. So I also cut down these 2x2 two two angle iron pieces each having 4 inches in length and uh, the main purpose of these L brackets are used to join the Z axis the bottom plate to the main frame and here they are joined together and uh, to join them I need to drill down the holes into the angle and then drill the holes onto the plate as well so that both can be joined together. The holes in the angles are kept slightly larger in size so that they will provide a wiggle room for slight error. So these are the bottom plates and after drilling the holes onto the L brackets I need to transfer the whole location onto these plates as well on the same location but instead of through holes these holes are going to be threaded with M8 thread tap. So these are the linear bearings and after using them for almost two years they are quite dirty so I decided to clean up all of them and also going to remove the paint 
but first of all I need to remove the bearing because that paint stripper gonna damage the rubber seal of the bearings so once the bearings are removed from their casings I first clean up all of them with acetone and this toothbrush and here you can see the difference between both of them before and after the cleaning and uh, I repeat this process three times until the solution remains completely transparent to remove the paint I dip them in paint stripper and kept them for a uh, two to three minutes and the paint is completely removed and then I grease up all the bearings so that they can easily slide the excess grease will be wiped down with the rag To join the top plate to the top of the Z axis I need to clean up the edges so that it will be easy for the square to take a reference and uh, after taking the reference I transfer the whole location and then tap them with M8 thread tap. So here you can see that wiggle room provided by those larger holes in the plate and this will help the plate to move left right and forward backward. I also drill and tap the holes onto the z-axis. The bottom plate and the post can be connected together. Then I start the work on to the installation of Y axis linear bearings. First of all I mark the center position for the linear bearings. Then I clamp them to its place and with the help of a broken drill bit made an indentation onto the pipe so that I can drill down those holes and after drilling the holes I tap them with M5 thread tap and fasten the rail to the main frame. Since I have to attach the second rail parallel to the first, so I decided to take the reference from the first rail and uh, for the better accuracy I am going to use dial gauge which helps me to kept it aligned with quite precision and once I get that I clamp the pieces and repeat the same procedure as I did earlier and attach the second rail also then I start assembling all the pieces together first of all starting from those bolts after that I install the leveling screws and make sure that the plate is in square with the main post then I install the linear rod holders Although the fine tuning is done in the last phase after the paint job has been finished onto the top plate you can see a slot and that slot is used for the easy entrance of the ball screw then I start the layout for joining that bottom plate to the main frame to join the post and the frame together I am also going to mark the whole location onto the bottom side so that both of those things can be joined together in this overall build all the bigger holes has been tapped with M8 thread tap and the smaller one tapped with M5 thread. Once these holes are finished the whole assembly can be put it together. There are few elements which have been left in this part like the gantry because I am not sure about the choice of material. Since I wanted to keep the gantry light in weight so 
hopefully I am able to finish this or at least make a test run in the next part other than that the few elements like leveling screw and end caps are going to be made with the 3d print those are also going to be act as a test pieces hopefully I am able to complete this machine as I wanted so if you like this video and wanted to see the progress of this build then make sure to hit the subscribe button and also don't forget to like the video that is extremely necessary i catch you in the next video till then have a great day